I've got one that can see. We seem to live in a world where the average person does not fully appreciate or understand the power of the image. The image could be anything. It could be a news article, a Hollywood movie, your favourite song on YouTube, the nightly news broadcasting, women's magazines, social media, the current fashion trends, etc. Television, film, news and video games companies seem to come out of every corner in today's startup centric economy. But while it may seem like you have endless options, most of the media you consume is owned by one of six companies. These six companies are known as the Big Six. Now, when you consider the fact that six corporations own pretty much all of the Western world's media and entertainment, it really begs the question, just how reliable and honest can they be? Other media's hand-picked public health officials telling the public scientifically accurate information. Was there any scientific or medical basis for the imposed government lockdowns? Is there misinformation in the mainstream media that's harming the public and causing needless suffering? There are many questions like these that we are not getting reliable answers for. This isn't just the case today, it's always been the case. According to Wikipedia, Operation Mockingbird was a large-scale program of the United States Central Intelligence Agency that began in the early 1950s and attempted to manipulate news media for propaganda purposes. It funded student and cultural organizations and magazines as front organizations. The main purpose of this fully implemented CIA program was to spread disinformation through the American media establishment and abroad. The original plan was to have a multitude of media assets monitoring and steering the flow of information. During this time, the CIA would hire and train an unknown number of journalists in order to better pursue this goal. Real concern that planted stories intended to serve a national purpose abroad um, came home and were circulated here and believed here because uh, this would mean that the CIA could manipulate the news in the United States by channeling it through some foreign country. However, CIA Director William Colby testified to the Church Committee that over 400 CIA agents were active in the US media to control what was reported through the American mainstream television, newspaper and magazines. Then US President Ford fired Colby after his testimony, replacing him with George Bush Sr., who ended the CIA's testimony, stating there were no other programs of concern to disclose and promising that the CIA would no longer influence the media. And some people chose to believe him. While the American government no longer acknowledges the existence of a propaganda operation, it's really not that hard to find proof that not only did the CIA and Department of Defense never stop manipulating the media, but that it increased dramatically as the years went on. This isn't something that just happens in America, but the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and the rest of the world also. It is from political theater to um, the way we kind of communicate to our children to the way that we inspire people, you know, and it's interesting that Hollywood and uh, you know, the clandestine services are both spend most of their time convincing people that something that's not true is in fact true. Hollywood sort of develops this way of telling stories and oftentimes uses that and philanthropic causes or political causes, which people may or may not think are good. But, um, you know, there are really positive offshoots. Are there many actors in Hollywood who also moonlight as agents, do you think? <laughs> I think there are probably quite a few, yes. <laughs> I think probably Hollywood is full of CIA agents and we just don't know it. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to discover that, you know, this was extremely common. I wouldn't say a friend of mine, but I know him. There's another defector, Nikolai Kochlov, who defected long time before I even joined KGB. Uh, he was also a KGB in, in Western Europe. 
Now he is, teaches psychology in, in one of California universities. He thinks that the Soviet Union developed an ESP, would you believe it, system of influencing the perception and minds of people. And the, the generators of ESP willpower can be focused on individuals and groups of individuals so efficiently that you can literally focus that beam or whatever it is on a pilot or two pilots or three pilots and convince them that actually they are flying on the safe territory so there is no need they, you can convince them that there is no need to to contact the, the, the ground base station and you can artificially draw the plane by brainwave into the Soviet airspace whether it is true or not I don't know but I know one thing, that when I was a student and I graduated from Oriental Studies Institute, one of my friends, he was an extremely intelligent Jewish boy, he graduated from the mathematical uh, department of Moscow State University. After three years, I returned from India for, for vacation, and I met him in the, uh, on, uh, during the reception at the Academy of Science, and I said, what are you doing here? He said, I'm working in a secret research bureau. You know, the secret, which means basically defense industry. They don't have addresses, they have post box numbers. And I say, it's not, is it that much secret that you cannot tell me what you research? He said, you wouldn't believe me? Brain waves. And I never saw him again. <laughs> ESP, which officially in the Soviet media is uh, described as a pseudoscience and decadent capitalist gimmick to sidetrack the minds of proletariat from the real issues of class struggle. But obviously KGB takes seriously that uh, pseudoscience. Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, Our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is to, to serve, serve our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about the trouble and trying to make it responsible. One side of the news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 He could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control uh, exactly what people think. And that is, the, that is our job. I feel like this short video captures what I've been trying to explain to you when it comes to psychological manipulation. His video demonstrates how pretty much every COVID-19 advertisement is exactly the same.
we first opened our doors. Since 1926. Since 1978. For 60 years. For 75 years. For over 80 years. In 90 years. For over 100 years. Nationwide has been on your side. Restaurants have always been there for you. Nissan has been with you through thick and thin. We will do what we've always done. Take care of people. We're people. 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 Family. 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 Families. 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 Even now. Especially now. Especially now. Right now. Now more than ever. More than ever. Today. More than ever. Today. More than ever. In times like this. At times like these. During these difficult times. In these troubled times. Challenging times. Trying times. In these times of uncertainty. During this time of great uncertainty. During these uncertain times. During these uncertain times. In uncertain times. In uncertain times. Uncertain times. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times. This unprecedented moment in our history. This time of social distancing. While things have slowed down. As we turn more inside. While the doors may be closed. While the distance between us has gotten bigger. The more we stay apart, we still find ways to stay close, even when we're apart. Even if we can't stand closer than six feet. We can all stay connected to work, school, and most importantly, to each other. There's still ways to touch each other. All without leaving the comfort and safety of your home. Without leaving the safety of your home. From home. Home. Your home. Get home. 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 That's the key. Buick and GMC are here to help. Con Edison is here to help. Here to help. Our teams are here. We are here. We're here. We're here. Here for you. Here for you. We're here for you. We're here for you. We are here for you. We're here for you. We are here for you. We'll be here for you. Runnings is here for you. We're still here for you. We're with you. We're part of your community. So you can trust us. You can count on us. And we'll get through this. Together. 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 And together. 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 Mastercard. This is exactly what happens in our world today, where a lot of people happen to be in depression, and the only escape they can find is by consuming video games and other forms of entertainment. It is all part of the plan. I wanted to preface this section with an image of the data centers considered used to administer the gang stalking networks in the US, presumably similar in other countries outside the United States also. This is the NWO behind all this, but it should go without saying it's all very militarily controlled. I thought of all things I'm presenting here, it might be the most help in understanding some of the epic and biblical chaos going on in the world right now. I'll discuss the phoenix and order out of chaos in the next chapter, but to define all the chaos the world is seeing right now in one word, that word would have to be Satanism, or maybe Luciferianism, as this does relate directly to the sun god, dating from well before Egypt. If you skip directly to this section, you won't take that as seriously as those who didn't, I'm sure, but that is why the mind control and gang stalking, also known as surveillance role playing, are happening. A prime goal, if not the number one goal of Satanism, is to control the minds of the rest of the public. And before I get too far, let me reiterate how the Illuminati elite feel about the lower actual working classes. We're goyim, or human cattle, or even insects to the phony Jew elite, or lab rats or mice to be experimented on by the unofficial Nazi Fourth Reich, Aryan Brotherhood, and even eaten by Minervan owl worshippers. Owls eat mice. To the Catholic Mafia and Pagans were slaves to be bullied and treated as animals just the same. And as I showed before, Washington DC was once called Rome, so that may offer a clue as to whose hidden hand might have been in the US military from day one. It's not all a Jew conspiracy as so many believe. You might even call them all the Brotherhood of the Snake. There are many controllers and handlers in the satanic mind control networks, filtering down through the ranks of the pyramid. 
Controlling the public is now possible with electronics, also referred to as psychotronics, but control is also fed into our brains through media, particularly television, the original indoctrination device, and even the likes of Disney. Yes, kids are being brainwashed into slaves of a satanic state and made into lab rats, hence Mickey Mouse. This also has a lot to do with the gang stalking phenomenon many TIs or targeted individuals are dealing with right now. It's a subject worth checking out if you feel you might be a part of it and didn't know. MK Ultra or Mind Control Ultra was designed to create robot slaves, mind controlled assassins, but no doubt had initially been planned as a social engineering construct. The extensive development of electronic weaponry, mostly referred to as psychotronics, allowed a progressively longer and broader attack range. Many psychotronic weapons are patented and viewable on the Surveillance Issues website, just for one. There are many videos and websites on the subject. Also note their quoting of the Patriot Act and how we can all be legally experimented on in the USA by the Department of Defense. It's to make it legal to spy on the public at large. MKUltra would later develop into other programs as well, likely including COINTELPRO in the FBI and Project Pandora in the CIA, with the latter more directly related to mind control. You can actually see the Pandora reference used in a lot of music, particularly rock music, because the music industry itself is controlled by Illuminati handlers. Music is a subtle method of control, particularly over the teenage demographic after the initial years of media indoctrination, and not just for coercion to consumerism. This is part of the Phoenix plot of Helter Skelter, an order out of chaos, which will become more apparent as we go here. Just keep bearing in mind, it's all for an end goal of Satanism. Believe it or don't. Mind control doesn't have to include electronics, it can simply be demagoguing and coercion of public mindsets, the forte of COINTELPRO. This is how most of gang stalking works, casting the victim in a negative light. Many perpetrators of gang stalking are civilians, if masons or union lackeys, and not necessarily part of a satanic cult, mafia, or military. In fact, Satanism doesn't enter into it for most of them. It's more of a game, like the surveillance role playing for Jade Helm exercises. It's not a game though. It has a very serious end result you can see coming just in the rising police state where our so-called peacekeepers are being armed to the teeth like a military. Back to MK Ultra, it was designed by the Nazi scientists of Germany, Dr. Mengele mainly, who were brought back to the USA with Operation Paperclip after World War II. A lot of the psychology is borrowed from the Tavistock Institute, created for the British military, remember NWO, and in the coincidental year of 1946 when the Grey Alien hype began. We mentioned Colonel Aquino of the Temple of Set being in the Psychological Warfare Division of the U.S. military. Do you think that's a coincidence here? He was also accused of being part of an on-base pedophile ring at Presidio, likely for reasons of black sex magic rituals like the Babylon working where every kid gets to have a new demon friend, a spirit guide. Sacrifices are only part of the picture. It's the energy they use for rituals. Again, this is part of the world satanic plot of worshipping old gods like Lam, beings well known in occult circles for originating outside our universe. Insiders like former FBI head Ted Gunderson were likely killed for exposing this kind of information, mainly cases of satanic ritual abuse, but also people like Bill Cooper. I have to interject about Ted Gunderson though. Douglas Dietrich, who has some interesting videos about the subject of the military and Satanism, claims Gunderson was in some kind of collusion with Aquino. Strange. Much of the NWO's Luciferian plot is a psyop, though. And this may seem far-fetched, but the largest group of inmates in military prisons is comprised of child sex offenders, roughly 60%, as you can clearly read about here. And I'll try to go slow, which I can't, but pause if you need to read. Then there was the case of American soldiers being told to look the other way from rampant pedophilia at military bases where Afghani Muslim soldiers were being trained, which was finally exposed, but no doubt only hand slaps dispensed for. This isn't only a Freemason or OTO insider cult of American soldiers, Defense Department contractors, or NASA employees who you'd expect to be friends with someone like the late Jack Parsons or maybe the guy a couple of doors down from Hannibal Lecter, but I've no doubt there's some kind of satanic connection. And lastly on this subject is Project Flickr, revealing that at least 5,200 employees of the DOD, NSA, DARPA, and NRO were involved in a child pornography sting, but the investigation was minimal, largely unheard of, and prosecutions doubtful at least as most had some link or other to the Pentagon or the Pentagram if you prefer. 
I will expand more on this point later with the Kay Griggs interview and her exposure of Satanism in government. Make no mistake that it's more than just a few people. I will also link Disney's sex indoctrination to these kinds of pedophile and satanic cults. There's also Satanism in the Mafia, and they're just another brick in the pyramid to use a Pink Floyd reference. They use mind control too, no doubt mostly for deniable MK assassin personalities, but the modern mafias are highly militarized and no doubt military affiliated. Every evil plays its role in the satanic, masonic NWO plot. Some of the psychotronic devices include microwave, EMF, and ELF weapons. I won't go over every weapon or acronym. It's worth checking these out on my gang stalking playlist. The police have sonic weaponry, like LRADs, designed as a psychotronic weapon in my opinion, though it's claimed to be a non-lethal deterrent weapon for crowd control. Many of these devices can throw voices for one as if hearing it in your head when on a subsonic or ultrasonic frequency, also known as V2K or voice to skull. This is largely the reason for using these devices in gang stalking or military targeting. The goal is murder, not control in so much, because of the Kabbalistic idea of Klyphot, or clawfoot, the mark of the beast, the 66 double V hand sign, and a belief that driving a person to insanity will also send them to the abyss with the fallen angel overlords when the victim dies. This is being done to the public at large, though, and through other means than just psychotronics. It's like an evil Nazi experiment for the synagogue of Satan, buried within Catholicism as well as antithetical Judaism. As I show more coming up soon, rock music has much to do with pushing this agenda. And I'll also talk more about the peace sign itself, a huge deception, in the next chapter about the false fifth age. It's all relative, but the end goal is to spurn the public toward the abyss using electronics. Other psychotronics are designed to input your brain waves, interpret your thought patterns, compile them in a computer, and translate into words. Some consider that the real neurophone. They can literally read your mind with electronics now, and it has funneled down from the military into satanic groups like the Black Lodge Masons and even the Blue Lodge Masons and police. A broader and broader control base of Satanists are using this kind of technology to wrest control of the minds of the public or even create infighting between families, ideologies, and institutions. This is a big part of the spiritual war Jesus was talking about and the Masonic motto of order out of chaos. It's not all demonic spirits and possession per se. And again, the name Satan means adversary, but he's also known as the accuser, and this seems to be the guiding principle in gang stalking. So if I generically call them Satanists, this is why. But I think the band Metallica captured the phenomenon best with the song Sanitarium. They also have a video where a robot bug crawls out of a kid's ear when he dies, as if to say that's the only way it was coming out. So much music and so many movies reflect this satanic movement, and few are really catching it until now. And you may see quite a lot of sacrilegious imagery where people like Madonna and Kanye West wear crowns of thorns, for example, no doubt at the behest of their Illuminati handlers. They're the ones eating the biscuit, though. They all get absorbed into the machine, as Pink Floyd puts it, an almost cyborg, hive-minded beast system that's represented best by all the grids and power cords in our lives, which does provide conductivity for negative, even demonic energy that would be too much to go on about here. We're all being slowly plugged into the machine, and the transhumanist agenda can be seen quite plainly in music as well. You can understand why so many Christians are upset about the RFID chips and how that syncs with Bible scripture about the mark of the beast. We would be completely dominated mentally and physically, therefore spiritually, and as a singularity AI or singular cyborg consciousness, we are that much easier to rule over. These musical lackeys of Lucifer's Goon Squad are helping point your children directly into the maw of hell, and they know it. They make fun with it. It's all part of the pyramid scheme, but that's how celebrities end up in the mind control chain like the rest of us. They're just treated differently. We're all placed in cross-referenced databases by now, demographically niched into neat compartmentalized tables in a spreadsheet. Anytime the Illuminati needs to incite infighting, whether politically or with psychotronics, they just reference a sort of control group for the Hegelian dialectic. They play all nations like chess pieces, or more aptly, like Stratego or Risk, while Satanists at the local level create infighting in people's homes through lesser magic, which is really just hypnosis and babbled nonsense for the most part. They love to see people fight, cause divorces, and all kinds of insanity people wouldn't know was happening. There is chaos being wrought in society up and down the pyramid, and this is classic adversarial Satanism. 
but also another ideology of theirs is that they are the balance in the world, the yang of the yin, the blind balance of justice and just plain polar opposite of good. This is a big motivator for them to do these things. Now I'll show you how that sick mother naughty Illuminati reference comes into play. Have you ever wondered why Disney just has to cruelly kill those mother figures or they're just not included in movies at all? Whether it's Bambi, Dumbo, Cinderella, Snow White, or most of the rest, there's a reason behind that mother hate, and it goes along with that sex symbolism people keep pointing out in their movies. As I said before, the Babylon working was for literally recreating Babylon, and Disney has no small part in this plot. You can see the sex symbolism mostly in the newer movies like The Lion King, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, and the others. Beauty and the Beast should be obvious given all I've talked about, but he is in fact a demon of a kind, a manimal. That was for a different psychological focus though. Disney also has a Masonic Club 33 at Disneyland, which is related. Also remember that unholy trinity I mentioned. It has significance here. As an aside, the anagram of Nickelodeon is O's Nick Eon. This is Satan's time after all, as I'll keep asserting, and he gets about an eon in the Bible. Satan is on about every channel now, thanks to his followers, for total control over the minds of children, and they're being forced into a mold of Satanism and mind control. It's not all about consumerism and corporate behemoths. School is an 18-year forced government training program that sterilizes the potential for brilliance in children, those who actually survive schooling and survive conformity and continue on to think for themselves, truly are a rare breed. All children start out as curious, highly experimental minds, and then one day, they're sent to school. Mandatory schooling has never consisted of anything but the memorization of monotonous dead facts and training children to master repetitious behavior. For the greater part of their day, everything the child says must match the interest of their school teachers. Their behavior must coincide with a set policy and a set regulation. They cannot use the bathrooms without permission. If they wish to speak, they must raise their hands. And after every hour or so, a bell rings and everyone must move to it. It couldn't be any more slave-like. And this type of training becomes a ritual for the child. It becomes the plot background for their television shows and books or the ideology taught to them by a teacher or a parent. An entire monoculture is being developed here, stripping children of their power to cause trouble for the state at an early age, training them to be good servants of the politically correct. Their environment is much like a prison by the population lacking any ability to check the authority of the warden. The process becomes a matter of rubber stamping. They have no control over their entire lives, which is directly related to youth violence because the only control they have is between each other. Mandatory schooling produces children who are either terrified of the tyranny of others or have been raised to perpetually exploit the conditions of others. It's just like the prison system forced cohabitation. The child's presence in certain buildings and their engagement in state regulated behavior is under penalty of imprisonment. An entire army of truancy officers have been hired to make sure that no child is on the other side of the bars. At the end of 18 years of coercive state authority, the child is released into the world. It's like the end of an 18 year prison sentence. Now that you're trained to do as you're told, now you can be free. And the produce of these schools, or the state-controlled manufacturing operation, is a society willing to submit, to obey, and to listen. Forced behavior, which technically amounts to a type of slavery, will only inculcate a mindset of fear and terror. You need to be somewhere at a set time, either at the orders of an authority or a bell. Everyone in one mass shifts to another position or another place to engage in a new activity. They're trained to not only follow instruction, but they're also trained to follow a certain behavior. Rules, regulations, and laws are set for the children. They say you cannot do this to others. You can do this to others. This is acceptable. This is not acceptable. Standards of culture, morality, and behavior are imprinted into these new young minds that are in the blossoming stages of development. Their minds are being intercepted by the state and molded to conform to state standards. The first lesson they teach you is the orders of authority. The second lesson is to work with each other to achieve the desired ends of those in control. If a group of children are taught to engage in the same behavior regardless of what they want to do, then they will never fight back as adults. And this is your group of tenants who will live in roaches and never call the health inspector. This is your group of citizens who is easily terrified by police officers into voluntarily giving up their rights. 
It's just your group of workers who surrender their lives to the corporation who tells them how to dress, how to speak, what time to wake up, which means they essentially tell you what time to go to sleep if they tell you what time to wake up. This is nothing new. These are the fruits of mandatory schooling. If we look into the roots of 19th century industrialism, the Civil War demonstrated to industrialists and financiers how a standardized population trained to follow orders without significant thought could be made to function as a money tree. It's no surprise that global power and corporate wealth is based on a third-rate educational system that works against developing individuals of true character and true intellect. Because the mindless bureaucrat or the thoughtless worker who will follow a system without question is the pattern that our system depends on. And this is what school produces. The system is not designed to educate the public, which is why federal and state bureaucracies call the shots, not the parents, not the local school boards. Every law is harshly enforced with maximum punishments. The tone of a principal is much like the tone of a warden, with no check on his authority. They will always have a way of using coercive ability to enforce a standard on the population. Strict punishment awaits any kid who disobeys this ruling force. And there is no doubt that an active student body reflects positively on school administrators. It's like factory floor men. They're fulfilling their quotas to the inspecting superintendent of the local school district. This is the reality of government training. The state doesn't care if children are homeless or on the streets or suffering from malnutrition and hunger. But the second the child fails to appear in school at the scheduled time, like a court date, the police are alerted. Until we abolish mandatory schooling, your child will be brought up as a slave so that he can accept becoming a slave later in life in adulthood. The brain is represented as male and female hemispheres, particularly in occult groups or even a mother and father figure if you like. The brainchild of these two halves, our dichotomous dualistic natures, is the third eye of enlightenment. It is the divine son figure to them, and they don't want any of us to have ours born, so to speak. They want us all doled down and spiritually limited in a base form of consciousness. I'm not advocating actively trying to do what they do, which is often out-of-body experiences, divination, precognition, and other practices denounced by God in Deuteronomy. But some people do naturally experience these things, and that is a threat to them. You might see through the societal MK programming then. So the female half is also known as the divine feminine or sacred feminine and is the side they are bashing down the most with Satanism and mind control. Why they are doing this is because you can see that the creative half is what makes you question authority, just for starters. How can you be a good slave to the machine and take orders blindly if you're thinking creatively? It's important to shift more of your consciousness toward the literal left. That's why most video games are just constant left brain attacks or puzzles with little or no real creative input. This is why they created the term MDK or murder death kill. They want that Jerry Springer beast mode turned on high, shifted all the way to the left. Everything in society is shifting to this attitude, which causes a lot of psychological problems on its own due to the imbalance, actually, like an inner conflict. And sex was the main factor in motivating that shift. Believe it or don't. To back this up somewhat, check out these zombie killer bullets you can buy. This is another Illuminati joke, with the joke being us goyim, human cattle, running around shooting each other. They're the vampires, and the rest of us hapless plebes are the zombies they actually feed on. It's where the metaphor in movies is coming from, and why the big zombie rage lately. Why the rage zombies is reflected a bit in the child psychological archetype of the little Nero, the ADD tantrum child who eats little ego mongers pizza that they're promoting in society with junk food and sugar addictions mostly. Again, holiday sugar rushes. Kids fulfill the rest of the construct when they become teenagers with music, drugs, and promiscuity mainly. Another part of the zombie metaphor is some psychotronics are designed to keep you in a fuzzy state of mind, confused, and even depressed. Are you depressed? Please take a part in our study. You may see a lot of commercials like that. Back to my point about selling sex as a beast motivator by using the woman in red symbolism the Masons love so much. They've paraded multiple sex symbols in media since the 1950s or so after the Babylon working. The red woman indirectly and psychologically acts as a representation of the mother figure even though she's supposed to be a distraction. Without going into details in psycho babble quackery, just take for granted the obvious. However trashy that whore they prop up in front of you is, that's the mother of tomorrow that little girls are emulating now. That's easy enough to understand, right? 
It started off with Amy Semple McPherson, really, as she was sort of the first media darling and evangelist leading everyone astray. You'll find she has direct Masonic links through her husband's, no coincidence there. But after the Babylon ritual, it started off with Marilyn Monroe. Then Jane Fonda caused a lot of controversy with Barbarella in the 1960s. I'd have to say Farrah Fawcett dominated the 70s, since all guys had the poster, I'm fairly certain. Her marriage to the $6 million man, Lee Majors, had to be one of those arranged Hollywood deals because he is a poster child for the transhumanist agenda as the bionic man. He even fought Bigfoot, an image of the beast, real or not. Then the 80s came along and Madonna with a very direct bash on the name of the ultimate sacred feminine. From there it just deteriorated to offshoots the Illuminati created and ended up with obviously MK controlled girls of Disney and the likes of Lady Gaga. When you see little girls wearing pointy bras, that's your mother of tomorrow. Don't think this wasn't all done on purpose. You can read about the beta kittens of Disney and many thought provoking articles about mind control and media at vigilantcitizen.com. Many videos are analyzed frame by frame almost. You can see the real effects with the toddlers and tiaras tantamount to pedophilia. It most likely is for some. It would have to be. Refer to the stories in the military before. They're killing that mother figure all the way down to infancy if they can and doing it pervertedly the whole way. If they can get grandma to get up and twirl her shirt in the air while dancing on a table, they will all cheer her on. They came up with cougars, milfs, and no doubt gilfs are on the way unless I missed something. They're a very sick group of possessed freaks, kids. Run from them, kids. Run to Jesus. Run fast. Run far. The old gods want to eat you. So do you see now how they make your mother sick and naughty? I told you so. Believe me now, don't you? Musicians are used as tools to help promote this MK agenda toward a beast system, and I couldn't possibly run my mouth long enough to cover all the material that I could prove that fact with. Many other videos are doing a great job of it actually, so look for them, but rock music was initially used as the vehicle to drive us there. Does that really surprise you after all I've said, or what you can see in music today? Everything has been driven to a lurid goth overtone, the hallmarks of Satanism. Blood, gore, death, mayhem, and wanton sex with anything that moves, ritual or not. It's driven mainstream society right into their psychological mold. Music moves everyone, and they control all sights and sounds like the TV show Outer Limits, and it's no coincidence that the theme to that show is all about the Illuminati and MK. As an aside, since I brought up the driving reference, take a look at Stephen King's Christine. The car was haunted by a demon. It was no ghost, but the movie is also about a type of mind control, and you can see that in the kids' transformation throughout the movie. Later they show their disgust for rock and roll, and that is a straight allusion to the musical mind control I'm talking about here. To further the Babylon metaphors, you can see that horror of Babylon being produced in women for the aforementioned reasons, and it's a fighting attitude to go along with. It's not all whoredom. This is part of the beast mode system for the mongrelized humanity I mentioned, creating the female side of slavery unbeknownst to the slaves. It's no coincidence that most female action characters are scantily clad, the warrior princess, which makes sense to wear a two-piece plate mail bikini in medieval combat. It's an archetype being sold to women, and little girls are eating it up as they get sucked into the nerdy world of video games and epic movies, normally only viewed by men. You are made into little Samira misses and juniors, no thanks to the transgender, transhumanist agenda of the beast system. For men, it's the image of Nimrod, the mighty hunter. The tattoos and piercings are the marks of a mighty tribal warrior, but also part of ancient Babylonian culture, as it's been in every tribal culture all along. It's war dress. They want all the guys pumped up, full of beast rage, and in the red base chakra zone. This can even be shown in the rising police state. Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? No. You only see what your eyes want to see. We do not hesitate to destroy in order to create a new world. God help it. I'm sorry for you. I for you, Thorndike. You and your world. You know what would happen then? Don't forget their Reichstag fire trial. You know their genius for producing witnesses and documents to prove their enemies guilty of what they intend to do. Today, Europe. Tomorrow, the world.
One of the first things you learn in this business is forget about capitalism versus communism. That is absolute nonsense. The two are behind the scenes are hand in hand. You need the so-called conflict between the two to keep people focusing. Look, they keep you looking over there, you know, capitalism versus communism. You know, that makes a nice little picture. You know, you get books on it and films on it, uh, capitalism versus communism. That's not where the action is. The action's over here. succeeding because the American people don't understand their enemy. They don't even know what's happening. People were extolling the virtues, the virtues of Pat Buchanan and actually considering voting for that man for president and he sent them all a postcard. And on the front of that postcard, he identified himself as a high priest of the mysteries. Because on the front of his Christmas cards that he sent to all of his followers was the penis of Osiris, the phallus, the obelisk, with a nice red bow tied around the base which represented the testes. You know what he was saying to you? Are there any children in here? He was saying, he was laughing at you. And so was every other member of the Illuminati. He was a highly degreed member of the sovereign and military order of the Knights of Malta, which was taken over in the Peasants' Revolt in England by the Knights Templars who had sworn revenge upon the old Hospitallers of St. John's, which later became the Knights of Malta because of their role in the suppression of the Templars. How many of you watch Trinity Network? How many of you watch Pat Robertson? You ever seen the cross in the crown? Do you know what that means? It's the symbol of the Templars. The Knights Templar. It is the symbol of the unification of the church and the government over the people. Is that what you want? If that happens, I'm going to have to take up arms all over again. And so will many of you, because you're going to be persecuted. You see? Because whichever one controls the government, you're going to have to conform to that teaching, and if you don't believe in it, you're a heretic. Do you understand what I'm talking about? What is our common bond truly? Freedom. Freedom. Without freedom, you can't be a Christian no matter what denomination you belong to. You can't be a Buddhist. You can't own a donut shop. You can't drive from here to Oregon. You can't be an American because that's what it's all about. And that's the only thing that it's all about. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's about freedom. In 1983, I heard Ronald Reagan and Brian Mulroney discussing the New World Order. Senator Byrd had acted in the capacity of a, a pimp and prostituted me to Reagan, and I was president of this, this White House cocktail party. Now, Ronald Reagan certainly provided a wonderful smoke and mirrors illusion for all of us. For those of you who don't want to believe that he's involved in this, he told you he's an actor. And he did a real good job of it for a long time. That was his role. That's what he was supposed to do. Nevertheless, I, I heard Ronald Reagan telling Brian Mulroney that he believed the only way to world peace was through mind control of the masses. I know from experience there's no peace of mind under mind control and I wonder at a world peace where people don't have peace of mind. Mind control, the ramifications of mind control are far reaching because I also know that under mind control there's no free thought. Without free thought there's no free will. 
without God-given free will, there's no soul expression. What kind of a world peace can we have without any free will or any soul expression? Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. For the past two years I've watched you humans slowly dissolve into a catatonic state of delusion, making even my experiments look tame in comparison. One thing your media lemmings keep saying is follow the science. And as the great purveyor of science, I have a few things to say about this. For one, I take offense to your bastardization of the scientific method. You're turning it into a corporate slogan, used to force others into ideological compliance. And while you claim you're following the science, in reality you're following ideology, not science. And I would know what the hell science actually is. It's the purpose of my entire existence. Second, I would like to address your multinational media and pharmaceutical corporations. You've been lied to. All of you. These media conglomerates are no longer beholden to their shareholders. They are subserviently to those same pharmaceutical corporations that are making all those lovely vaccines your governments are attempting to force onto their populations. Is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360. Brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline. Brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. Start. Brought to you by Pfizer. Pfizer, for instance, is no longer depending on their other products to make profit. Most of it is now dependent on the sale of said vaccines. And with the government being the main customer, they are taking your tax money to fund buying millions of shots, while the media, being funded by those drug companies, is using their influence to craft a narrative that facilitates this pyramid scheme. I'm actually quite impressed with the systemic fraud these actors have implemented. Use the media to scare the public, who then begs the government to buy millions of shots from drug companies that are funding the media to scare the public. It's genius. Absolutely genius.